A lot of users have favorite queries, and PeopleSoft's My Favorite Queries offers quick access to our favorite queries. The problem is you have to navigate to Query Manager or Query Viewer to launch your favorite queries. Wouldn't it be nice to launch them directly from the nav bar on the right, just like you launch any of your other favorites? Just like, say this. Now, step one is to find where PeopleSoft stores favorites and then expose that data. Now, we covered that in a prior episode and we included the link in this video's description. In this episode, we're going to build the page that lists our favorite queries. Now, the nav bar is a split interface. The left side of the nav bar contains a list of tiles. Generally speaking, tiles are just images that represent the target. Tiles are just another way to visualize a content reference. Now, we cover tiles in great detail in our Fluid Navigation and Fluid One training classes. Now, the right side of the navbar is the content area. When a user selects a tile from the left, that tile may load its content into the right section. When I say its content or the tile's content, what I really mean is the content reference target. As an example, every menu item has a label. And when you click on any one of these labels, PeopleSoft loads the content into the main transaction area. Now, navbar tiles are the same. They can load their content into the main transaction area, or as in this case, load their content into the right section of the nav bar. So what we need to do is build the content, which will go in the right-hand side. And since the content area is fluid, we'll build a fluid solution. Now, in our fluid basic development and our fluid one courses, we cover the differences between classic and fluid in great detail. And we answer the questions of whether you really need a fluid page. For this episode, we're going to keep it simple and build a fluid page. So in application designer, I'm going to create a new so file, new, page, and I'll choose parens fluid because this is going to be a fluid solution. And it asks us what layout to choose. I'll choose PSL apps content and then give it a name. How about YT fave QRYTLFL? And do you wish to save a copy of the people code associated with the, the layout? That's what PeopleSoft is asking me. My answer is yes, because my thought is if Oracle gave us people code with these layouts, there's probably a reason I probably want it. Okay, so what we're building is going to look a lot like what you see on the screen. And we can see on the screen that there's a button in the upper right corner, and below that, there's a list of queries. Now, our inspiration for this, the layout, comes from the Oracle delivered My Team tile, which you can see lists My Team members, as well as a button to launch My Team. Now, rather than listing My Team members and launching My Team, we will list our queries and launch either Query Manager, Query Viewer, whatever seems appropriate to you. But the key here, what we need to recognize is the button is on the right-hand side of the screen. That's not the default behavior for buttons in Fluid. So what we have is a layout issue. And what we say is if you give a developer a layout issue, developer is going to ask for a group box. So we'll use a group box for layout purposes. And the style classes we'll use here are PSC underscore HLI dash right to move the content to the right and PSC underscore padding dash standard. Now, the point of the padding is to put a little bit of space around the button so that all the content isn't squished together, but it's using the standard spacing. Whatever PeopleSoft determines is the standard spacing. If PeopleSoft determines the spacing should be bigger, fantastic, we inherit that. If PeopleSoft says the spacing should be smaller, again, fantastic, we inherit that. That's the value of using the standard classes. And as a best practice, we'll use that as documentation. And since this is an invisible group box will mark it as layout only. Okay, now we need a button in here, as we can see, a button. Now a button has field change people code and that field change people code, you would think it'd be a great idea to perhaps direct to a different component, uh, use the response.redirect URL, uh, use one of the other people code functions to transfer to a different component. But what we've discovered is that the nav bar actually has a some JavaScript methods and functions for that. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. So let's set the button aside for now. We'll come back to that. And let's focus on the list below. Now, this list is a variable list, meaning we don't know how many items are going to be in this list at design time. We just need a way to generate a list. And one way to generate a list is to use a grid. So I'm going to add a grid to the page. Now, this grid is going to have properties set to make it not look like a grid. It's going to look like a list. 
but behind it actually is a grid. Now, don't worry too much about alignment. You can see here my alignment is a mess. Don't worry too much about spacing either. What's important is that we leave enough space for our content. The fluid rendering engine determines layout and placement. So we'll leave that to the fluid rendering engine and we'll focus on just the content. We're focused on tab order and containment, order and containment in fluid. Okay, so let's add our fields. So we see from the user experience that we want the query name and the query description. So let's add those. And again, we built this record in a prior episode. So I want the query name. So I'll drop that here. And we want the query description. Again, don't worry about the size of the columns. The fluid layout will control the size of the columns. We'll mark this as display only. And on the fluid tab, I'm going to mark this as PSC underscore strong to make the content bigger and bolder. Okay. And on the description, we're going to mark it as display only also and use a slightly different style class. This time we're going to use a style class. It's called PSC list secondary data. Now the value here is it's going to make the font a little bit smaller than the standard font. And then we'll say, okay. Now we don't want this grid to look like a grid. See, a grid usually has columns. Those columns have column headings. The rows have row headings. Those are the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. So let's open the grid properties and make some changes. Now, first thing I wanna do is choose unlimited occurs. So if I have five, 15, 200 favorite queries, they'll all show in the list. Then let's go to label and let's turn off the row headings and the column headings. It's supposed to look like a list and the context provides meaning. So we don't need labels. That's the name of the query. I mean, you know that you can tell because we're looking at my favorite queries. The content underneath, that's the description of the query. Again, you can tell by context. We don't need labels. Now, on the navigation bar, in your typical grid, you'll have download to Excel, you'll have find in grid, and you'll have row count. Now we need to turn all of those off. So from the properties, I'll go to row counter, mark it as invisible, find, mark it as invisible, download, mark it as invisible. And then we'll say, we don't want to see any of the nav bar. Isn't that interesting? You have to mark each of those items individually before you disable the navigation bar. I think that's interesting. Okay, on the use tab, we'll say no row insert and no row delete because we want to get rid of the plus and minus next to the grid because we're not inserting rows. This is just supposed to render a list of links. And then we'll change the grid layout to a list grid layout unordered. Now we have a couple of style classes that we want to use here. Uh, the first one is we're going to say that this is a list link menu. And then the next one says, hey, this is going to be a one column. And then finally, we're going to say, hey, this is going to have a border around each of the items within the grid. And then we say, oh, just kidding. We actually don't want a border around everything. We just want a border at the top of each item. Well, that's interesting. Why didn't I just say border top only? Well, the answer is I want to inherit the default border attributes. That would be the border color, the border size, the border style, but only for the top. Okay, now we have a list, but we still have two columns and we need to have one column with, you might say, sub columns, because if you were to look at this, you would say, no, that's clearly one row in this next item. As I hover over, you can see the background color changing is clearly a different row, but the content is stacked. So PeopleSoft provides a facility to stack columns in a grid through group boxes. So we need to insert a group box at the front of the grid. Now this group box is gonna act as a container for the content within each row. So we're going to go to the fluid tab and set some style classes to cause the content to render properly and set the group box type to layout only. Now this design gives us the basic content rendering but we have a couple of challenges. First, we have several places a user might click and each click is supposed to load new content into the main transaction area. And there are many ways to do this, but PeopleSoft has a special JavaScript method for the nav bar. So it'll require some extra JavaScript and HTML. Second, as we hover over each row, we should see some sort of hover effect. And again, there are many ways to accomplish this, including coding it ourselves. 
but we want to code as little as possible so PeopleSoft can own and maintain the appropriate hover effect. Let me give you an example. The hover effect in 857 looks different than the hover effect in 858 and 859. I want PeopleSoft to own that appearance. So I can write the CSS, I can write the JavaScript, but if I do that, then I have to maintain it. But anyway, let's say both of those for a future episode. Now at JSN Pros, we teach people tools and web development concepts like this every week. Be sure to check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea. Subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or do you have a team that wants to learn more? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future soundbite? Let us know by sharing your idea at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.